morning again. I'd like to thank EWT for including a plant in the wildlife agenda um, because cycads are plants. Oh, sorry, cycads are wildlife. And I'd like to also um, <laughs> just argue that they are, as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, um, this is the most important or the highest priority conservation issue we're facing in South Africa today. And that is our cycads are fi um, facing an extinction crisis. Globally, cycads are the most threatened group of organisms to be assessed so far on the planet. That is, they're more threatened than birds, reptiles, amphibians. Of the 380, uh, 308 species of cycads on the pl planet, South Africa's 38 cycad species are the most threatened. They're also the most threatened plant group in the country. Three cycad species are already extinct in the wild. Twelve are critically endangered. And looking at those critically endangered, four of them are on the brink of extinction. We're talking like one or four plants left. There are seven species with less than 100 plants left in the wild. Then we've got four species that have been listed as endangered by the IUCN. Nine is vulnerable, and seven is near threatened. Seven are near threatened. Why? Okay. Simply, people want to have cycads. They are rare and ancient. That's probably why they want them. And cycads have been on the earth for the last 280 million years. They're the oldest living seed plants, and they've already survived three mass extinction events. So people want to have them in private collections, like that one in the photograph. There are probably about an estimated 5 million cycads in private collections in South Africa. So incidentally, this is predominantly a domestic trade. Then people also want adult cycads to grow seedlings for a lucrative domestic and international market. So that graph there shows the number of cycad specimens exported internationally since 1975, and you can see how it is increasing. And also cycads are used in, as traditional medicine. <coughs> the problem is that cycads grow too slowly. So if you look at this uh, regression relationship here, you can see that a largish cycad at about 13 centimeters in diameter is about of tw uh, approximate 12 years of age. So you have to wait 12 years before you get a large plant, which is what everybody wants, and that's when cycads usually become reproductive. And if you've gotten a seedling right at the beginning and wait that 12 years, you may be unlucky enough to have a male plant, which doesn't earn you lots of money. So what do people do? They source cycads from the wild. The problem is that cycads are long-lived. Plants can be hundreds of years old, and the collection is unsustainable. So that table shows the output of a model that was um, developed by Raimondo and, and Donaldson on one of the more long-lived cycad species. And it shows you how many years is required for a population to recover after a certain number, number of plants have been removed. So if you remove five plants from this population at one time, only 70 years later will that population have recovered. If you remove 30 plants, you're looking at more than 400 years before that population would have recovered. Poaching affects 95% of South Africa's cycad species, and it is severe for 15 species. This is the poaching impact, so it makes the rhino situation look like child's play. Thousands of wild cycads have been removed by poachers in the last two decades. So these are just some of the statistics for the critically endangered species, except for the last species, um, Eugene Maresia, which is currently listed as endangered. And these are from surveyed populations, okay, not populations that we don't know of. So approximately 200 serenus, I think that's the KZN species, has been removed. There are five left. 1,060 cupidus, gone, 50 left. 75 dolomiticus estimated, poached, 139 are left. Approximately 90 henaniae poached, 24 are left. Hirsutus, estimated 500 have been poached. We only know of one plant left. 
Inopinus, 677, poached. We think the species is now extinct in the wild. 1,670 Lavifolius poached. Only 95 are left. Lati France, about 180 have been poached. 45 are left. Middle Bagensis, about 500 poached. 350 left. Missing Garnus, another KZN species, I think. Six left. 150 poached. Eugene Maresiae, almost 10,000 poached. 360 are left. Poaching is even happening on protected areas. It doesn't matter that cycads are in protected areas. So in Mpumalanga, poaching has been taking place in Blader Rafizput Nature Reserve, Songam Vela Game Reserve, Merikskorp Nature Reserve, and in Limpopo, in Tembe Beni Game Reserve. We actually have excellent legal protection measures for these cycads. Our environmental conservation legislation is really good. So we've got provincial legislation, which lists cyca um, species, cycads as specially protected, protected or endangered, depending on the province you're in, and various restricted activities are regulated in terms of this legislation. Then we have the National Biodiversity Act, which lists species, uh, cycad species as threatened or protected in terms of Section 56, and a whole lot of restricted activities in, are, are regulated in terms of Section 57. Added to this, all activities are prohibited for wild cycads as of May 2012. But there are problems with implementing this legislation. Firstly, human resource and budgetary constraints in all the provinces. So if you just look at the um, vacancy rates for posts in the enforcement divisions in the various provinces, in Gauteng, 40% of these posts are vacant. And this is the hub of the cycad market. In Pumalanga, 51% are vacant. In Limpopo, almost 70% are vacant. In Pumalanga has no operational budget, and Eastern Cape has a limited operational budget for the Special Investigations Unit. Secondly, the implementation, in the province of, uh, the implementation of provincial legislation in Gauteng, KZN, and Eastern Cape has been ineffective, passed ineffective uh, in, in the past. And this means that poached plants are, have been and continue to be legalized and incorporated into private collections and parental stock. I'm not going to go into the details of that. That's, there's no time. Also, microchips have failed to deter poachers and have facilitated the laundering of poached plants. So the poachers manage to find the microchips in the plants and remove them. And they also take legal microchips out of legal garden plants and insert them into wild plants, effectively um, laundering the wild plants. And then finally, the small fines and minimal jail sentences for CICAD-related offences are ineffective deterrents. So this is the result in Gauteng, which, as I said, is the hub of the, of the CICAD market. Just look at the pictures at the top and the middle of those large plants. They're all legal plants. Okay? They're much too big to have been artificially propagated or cultivated, yet they have permits. The pictures on the left and right with the yellow stars, these, those plants are clearly wild collected. You can see signs of that in, in their growth, yet they all have legal microchips inserted in them. The plant in the middle at the bottom has paperwork proving that it's legal. And that's all I have to say.